Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on, not only with this next severe weather that we are dealing with. Matter of fact, what is happening around the corner? Because we got an extreme weather pattern that is about to set up. And it's going to kick off a lot of snow, a lot of cold temperatures, and our severe weather. Now, we still got our first severe weather event. If you like a channel with no hype, make sure you subscribe. I always downgraded this storm because it never looked like it had all the contents needed for a two-day severe weather outbreak matter of fact it has downgraded significantly to just one day now having said that it only takes one storm of course it only takes one tornado to make this a very significant event but i always showed it was never going to be this super big hyped up story that everybody has been talking about what is coming after will be an extreme pattern. Matter of fact, look at the latest updates on your vorticity. You are going to get these storms that's going to brew up as you go through Tuesday morning, just like I talked about on Friday. This is going to take over some of your oomph out of the atmosphere for this severe weather event that kicks off Tuesday afternoon into the early morning for Wednesday as well. So that is going to be overnight storms, bringing some snow, bringing some freezing rain. A lot of that is going into Ontario. And that next little piece of energy that breaks off as that comes through. And look how much weaker that is. We still got to keep our eye out for that. That is still a little bit past five days. Then the very beginning of March, look, this is an extreme pattern we're going into. We're going to a deep trough. Matter of fact, we're going to get a couple of these. So we're going to get a deep trough of some rotating atmosphere right off the West Coast. A very strong storm coming in for the beginning of March. Look at that. As that pulls down and makes a lot of snowfall on the wraparound. But look how tight that tightens up as that goes towards the beginning of March. A lot of tight isobars as well. Bringing you some chances for winds. Now keep in mind. Usually when things like this pop up and it's past five days, it's past six and seven days, usually it'll go up on a higher ridge. This could become a big threat going into Canada. It's too far to show exactly what this is going to do. Everything does change. It is trending with GFS as well. But just seeing that right there, that right there was very concerning to me. That's why I brought it to your attention. And showing because of the cold air coming in, that storm is bringing a lot of potential snowfall with it. Feet of snow. Also showing it's going to bring our dew points way up as we go into the first week of March. Bring our severe weather on the east side of that storm. So we do need to watch that system. It is showing a lot of potential. Plus, look at the pattern that we're going to go into. This is your EPO, East Pacific Oscillation, whether you're going into a high ridge or a deep trough on the west coast of the U.S. Now, you can see right here, as you go into March, and again later in March, it happens twice, this one is deeper. And this is when we also have cold air coming in, a lot of cold air coming in, more for the second one than for the first one also. So I think we have two big extreme patterns coming. Now, when you got a trough like this, you got a deep trough coming in on the west coast of the U.S. And usually when you got a, a deep trough on one side, you got a high ridge on the other. This is going to bring our extreme weather pattern. And you see we have this twice. And at the same time, cold air is coming in with this system as it begins into March even deeper on that second trough. Now you can see this when you look at your temperatures. You have well above average temperatures kicking off all the way into the beginning of March where you got below average temperatures kicking in. And look how it moves across. So above average temperatures move off into Canada. And the below average by the middle of March towards the end of March really kicks in for the U.S. bringing below average temperatures instead of your first day of spring. And as you go towards the end of March, then it moves towards the Great Lakes in the beginning of April, then you got your springtime. Also showing that it could be bringing in freezing temperatures as we go from the 9th through the 15th of March. A lot of cold temperatures coming in with these deep troughs, so I'm showing that we're just going to be in extreme weather patterns until that transition. Now you can see this first system does go all the way towards the Great Lakes before it finally starts bringing down that heavy snowpack, some of that freezing rain, and you kick in to that severe weather. Then as you go through Wednesday, it's still bringing that line of storms with it, bringing some damage and winds with it. But severe weather has totally disappeared for Wednesday. 
Then our storm coming in for the beginning of March. It is a big storm, but it is too far away to take seriously. Look how far away this one was. Remember, I've been warning y'all that people have been showing that severe weather pattern from nine days out, and look how much it changed. This is literally eight days out itself, but we do have the data that's showing we do have trough coming in. We also have a lot of cold air coming in. We didn't have that for the severe weather event that we're going through for Tuesday. And that makes all the difference in the world as far as what's going on with these crazy models. If it don't have the data behind it, you really can't believe what you see because it always changes. But you can see the snowfall for the next five days for Washington, Oregon, two to three feet or more expected. Also for Idaho, western Montana, some for western Wyoming, some for the higher elevations in Colorado. So how y'all been liking this cold blast that passed through for this weekend? We have another one coming after we deal with this now this is bringing more snowfall also towards the snore central the great lakes a little bit just a little bit of flurries not really a lot of addition northern michigan northern wisconsin up of michigan you have your best chance and everyone else in the rocky mountains but other than that it's just going to be too warm you will see it but as far as it's sticking around maybe in your grass plus our severe weather look how much has changed from spc this is what we have from CSU, from College State University, still showing it could be intense as you go towards Illinois and western Indiana. I agree with that, especially around 6 p.m. I've seen some pretty nasty cells. I'll show you. And when you look at SIPs, it's showing it to be lower Missouri, northern Arkansas. And as you go into Wednesday, SPC has taken away all that severe weather. CSU has shown that it could still be that front line. We still got a front line storm coming bring a little bit of damage and winds as well, maybe into the high 40s, very low 50s is even possible. And you can see over here for SIPs, still showing it could be some severe weather. So you can see the latest severe weather by SPC for Tuesday, you got a 5% and you still got that 15%. So here's your cities and states at risk for severe weather for Tuesday. And I am showing Illinois going into Indiana is the worst location. National Weather Service does have scattered strong to severe thunderstorms associated with isolated wind damage, hail, and possibly a few tornadoes will be possible from late Tuesday afternoon into the evening and overnight from parts of the Ozarks into the mid-Mississippi Valley and southwestern Great Lakes. And you can see why I've been screaming this for so long. So as you go all the way into Tuesday morning, all you're getting is... The 50 dew points and you need 55 just to get those thunderstorms so as you see as you go through the evening then you get to 60s that kind of spread out into indiana into illinois bring in more chances for thunderstorms to grow for these cells to get stronger this is where you're going to get more severe as you go from five o'clock in the evening all the way into that cold front smashes down early in the morning bringing chances for hail and some of these isolated cells. And as you go through Wednesday, look how it just dissipates so quickly. The cold front coming in so fast. So you see what your cape or your lift, you get this big burst of all this lift. You get these very warm temperatures. Remember, you get that above average anomaly, below average anomaly. I showed you about a week ago that it is moving in. This is for Tuesday morning. Just moving in a few storm cells, maybe some hail involved. It don't have a lot of dew points, a lot of particulates in your atmosphere but by the afternoon it really gets reset and a lot of moisture in your atmosphere and you still get all that lift you get all that cape in atmosphere this is helping those thunderstorms growing so from five o'clock all the way to late in the evening you will have a problem with your severe weather only for one day but when you look at your lightning strikes, you can see all Tuesday morning that it is going to bring some strong cells going across Kentucky, a little bit northern Indiana, and for Tennessee. You even get some cells going through northern Mississippi all morning long. Now, that's going to go through very quickly. This is where you're just starting to get into those high 50 dew points. But once you go to the afternoon and you get those 60s spreading, then you're going to get those strong storms forming up 5 p.m. As you go later, look at that for Illinois. Very strong. This shows a lot of convection, a lot of lightning strikes, a strengthening cell, maybe large hail involved as well. Maybe a chance for a tornado by 6 p.m. as that moves towards the east. Bring southern Wisconsin in by 7 p.m. By 8, still strong in that region. Now it's pulling in from eastern Missouri. By 9 o'clock, you still have it. Look at the strength of these cells. By 10 o'clock, you got chances for large hail now. All that white is indicative of to large hail, a lot of lightning strikes. 
by 12, still strong for northern Indiana, a little bit of southern Illinois. And look at this, still going by 2 o'clock in the morning. Strong cells pushing through all the way till 4. Then you got that cold front smashing through and the lightning strikes weaken down, the storms weaken down, and everything just goes away. Then you got that front as you go through Wednesday. You see this front, it's bringing all the way down, bringing you chances for damage and winds, but you see it's not super severe on these cells. It will be on a weakening motion. All in all, bringing some winds all the way towards the four corners, higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains, 50 and 60, even getting some 70 in there in the brown. Then we got more storm systems that's moving in from Wednesday on. It's going to start bringing some more winds involved with y'all as well. But let's talk about just the first system, go one at a time. You see it is strengthening as it goes by Texas, Oklahoma. Then once it goes by the Great Lakes, then it starts bringing those winds where it brings 40, even chances for 50 in the higher elevations. And as it goes offshore, really strengthening up right along the coast, bringing those 50s and maybe some 60s. So just be aware of it. So you do have that little front that's going to be forming up. It is bringing some damage and winds with it, but the tornado chances and all that has dissipated. I will keep you updated, but this has downgraded significantly. Now remember, as you go through Monday and Tuesday, this is going to bring those above average temperatures. I posted this about a week ago. As this moves in for severe weather for Tuesday, this is bringing a lot of below average temperatures towards British Columbia. That is showing 50 degrees below your average because it's just reversed on our temperatures. But as you go through Tuesday, you can see you get above average temperatures kicking in while you're getting that below average kicking in. Then once you go to Wednesday, it goes further to the south and Thursday further to the east. But remember, we are going right back into above average bubble after that. And then we got more cold air coming in right behind that. Still bringing in some cold temperatures for Tuesday and for Wednesday. Pretty far to the south by Missouri, Oklahoma, and to Kansas. Then your highs for Wednesday will stay across the Great Lakes, north central, the upper Midwest. Come right back down for Thursday again. And then it will go towards northeast on Friday. Then we're going to be on that above average bubble. And then we got the beginning of March with that next extreme pattern kicking in. Thank you for your time, everybody. I will keep you updated. And before you go, Matthew 24, 37 through 42 is so important. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I will keep you updated. Watch out for the hype on this one because you've seen how much this one already shrunk. Imagine what they're going to do on the next one because that one shows the data behind it. It actually has the cold air, actually has the deep troughs. Matter of fact, two of them. So I'll keep you updated. I'll keep it as mild as possible. I don't like doing hype. To me, that's just a bunch of lies. <laughs> just remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe. Gives you wisdom on know what to watch, what not to pay for, pay attention to. There's just too much going on out there. It's unbelievable. And it's actually ruining the ones that care. There's a few of us out there that does care. And you can tell by our views. We don't get a lot of views because we tell you the truth. So watch the hype. Don't support the hype. Otherwise, it will always be coming with more hype. And who wants that? A little bit of truth. Live in truth. There's a better way to be. At least you know what is going on in your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Keep watch. You never know what hour he may come. Could be today. <laughs>